Hi and welcome back to a new video and again today a new hardware launch. Just way too many launches right now. Today it's going to be B650E, so the smaller chipset for AMD. In particular we're going to look at the B650E Aros masterboard from Gigabyte. Going back to the X670E launch and especially the pricing of the motherboard going from probably 400 to up to like 1200 euro, it didn't really make much sense or still doesn't make a lot of sense to pair these boards with especially the six and eight core CPUs, just because the ratio of the board to the CPU is just way too unbalanced. And it's getting a bit better now. It's not getting like really perfect because those boards are still quite expensive, but it's getting there. And I also think this is pretty much all you need. Because even on the B650E board, you can overclock your CPU. That's what we're going to do in today's video. We will overclock the 7950X simply because I want to try how the VRM on this board holds up overclocking of the AMD 16 core CPU. And at the same time, we also want to test offset mounting. That is something we did already back with AMD Ryzen 3000 CPUs. Because starting from that generation, AMD did not have the hotspot in the center of the CPU. That was for 3000 and 5000 series CPUs and it should still be the same for the 7000 series. Igor's lab already did an analysis that there is definitely a hotspot which is sitting a bit more in the south of the CPU and we already had some offset mounting brackets for Ryzen 3000 which we can still use for today's video and if this is going to help we might do an update to this product. Previously, we saw temperature difference of about typically, let's say between two and six degrees Celsius, depending on what kind of cooler, how the cold plate and the cooler itself is built. That will depend what kind of temperature results we will see. We will check that out in today's video. I still find it pretty entertaining considering that this is the, the small chipset, how much equipment and features you have on these boards. I mean, as I said before, this is PCIe 5.0. The main M2 slot is also 5.0 and then you still get three more. I mean, what else would you ask for? So that's pretty much all you need. And even the VRM should be more than enough. We have 16 phases in total. They are in a paired configuration. That means that two power stages each are working together. So we have eight pairs, but just considering the power consumption of Ryzen 7000, this should just work perfectly fine. Our CPU guard is now also available, ready to go. This is now also a retail unit because previously in the launch video I only showed a sample. So that's now also available and that is the offset bracket which we made back then for Ryzen 3000. CPU guard is in place. For the retail units we also decided to include three. So you have a black one, you have a red one and you have a gray one. They can also tear apart easily because it's quite a thin material so you have three just in case something goes wrong. And for the offset mount, the one which we made back then for Ryzen 3000, it just goes on the standoff of the normal AMD backplate. And this way we can offset the CPU cooler a bit to the south. We are using a 360 AIO, it's the Aros Water Force. I first thought about going with custom water cooling simply because you can push the 7950X a little bit higher because it's really hot without modifications. But then on the other hand, I thought the more realistic scenario is using a B650E with an AIO. And even though we might not be able to push the VRM as much to the limit, I think it's just a more realistic scenario. The first step was obviously flashing the BIOS to the latest version and now also the Expo profile is running at the dedicated 6000 megatransfers C30 and now I will dial in a manual OC. The CPU is now running 5.4 GHz across all of the 16 cores at about 1.26 volt on the cores. And we will now perform Cinebench R20 simply to get a baseline for our temperatures as comparison for our offset mounting later. And as usual with Ryzen 7000 temperatures straight above 90 degrees Celsius, you can see the power draw above 230 watt on all of the cores combined. And in the end, what we're going to compare are the temperatures of CCD1 and CCD2. On the CCD1, we have 94 degrees Celsius, CCD2 peak 86 degrees Celsius. Final score is just below 1500 points. It should be a bit higher, but that's again due to the fact that we are also running CPU-C and hardware info at the same time. So that should be our baseline for our offset mount later. 
I'm almost done with the VRM testing. First of all, I wasn't even quite sure which of the temperature sensor is reading out the VRM temperature. Now I'm quite sure that it's the temperature five, simply because I also added a probe on the back. But you can see it's only one minute remaining out of the 15 minutes. And if we go to the power draw, you can see over the previous like 14 minutes, it has been an average power of 202 watt and it's only 52 degrees Celsius. The test is over, the highest temperature we could see was 52 degrees Celsius. It now dropped a little bit by two degrees Celsius that it passed the test, but still that is, that is like perfect. Couldn't be any better. Considering that we ran a test of 15 minutes with continuous load of 200 watt. Obviously 15 minutes is not too long, but I think it's a very realistic scenario for, for example, rendering a video. That's why I think it's a good test to do. And even after 15 minutes, like 50 degrees Celsius, that is so far away from any kind of critical temperature that yeah, just couldn't be any better. The Ryzen 3000, a bracket which we originally made, which we're going to update, back then used M4 threads. That means we're going to have to update this one, but the Gigabyte AIO is using M3 threads, which means that I will have to extend the whole diameter of the Gigabyte AIO from M3 to M4. The offset brackets are in place. Now I will only have to put the cooler on, then use these M4 screws. So that's pretty much like a DIY solution because those brackets were not made for this socket, but it should still work anyway. Then put on the cooler and fix it with some thumb nuts. And this way offset the cooler to the south by about eight to nine millimeters. The cooler is mounted even with the offset, but I had to remove the M.2 cooler, which is sitting like right next to it because it would collide with the AIO mounting. If you would run this 24 seven, then you could certainly also just use a file and just cut off a tiny bit of the mounting bracket and this way still mount the M.2 cooler. But I think for this quick test, it should be fine. And I'm curious what kind of temperatures we will see now. We will now repeat our Cinebench R20 testing. It's the same CPU configuration and we will pay attention to CCD1 and CCD2. At CCD1, we previously had a peak temperature of 94 degrees Celsius and at CCD2, we had 86 degrees Celsius. We are now at 93 on CCD1, so that's a one degree Celsius improvement, but we lost one degree on CCD2. So I would say that is within margin of error. A quick summary regarding the offset mounting. So far, we can see no temperature improvement by moving the cooler a little bit south of the CPU. On Ryzen 3000 and 5000, we had a completely different shaped IHS. First of all, it was about half the thickness on Ryzen 3000 and 5000. That could be one reason that the heat previously was spread different. And you also have to keep in mind that previously the heat spreader had much more mass and surface area in the south of the CPU. Whereas now the heat spreader is simply ending pretty much below the CCDs. So that could be one explanation why, at least currently with the method we used in today's video, offset mount seems not to help to improve temperatures on Ryzen 7000. Because if it's only like one degree Celsius or even two degrees Celsius, I personally would not change the mounting system and spend money on it. If it's like one degree, doesn't really make a change, at least if you compare it to, for example, the deleting results, which we already showed in a previous video. We will still investigate this further and see if we can find future improvements and I will definitely update you on this. Regarding B650E, unfortunately, I don't know the pricing of the board. That's a bit unfortunate because if this is like 700 euro, it just wouldn't make much sense, right? But if this is maybe 250 to 300 euro, then this should be a very good option also for the six core and eight core CPUs because it's a very solid board. I did not have any issues on the memory. I did not have obscure boot times, which I had on other boards. I did not have any memory issues, straight expo profile with tight timings, no issue whatsoever. And also the VRM temperature, especially considering that this is not featuring those very fine fin stacks. Like on the X670 e board, we had those fins, like very thin fins. This is just using a pretty much normal heatsink, but the VRM design seems to be so solid that it's just running so cold temperatures on the VRM. So total approval from my side for this board. I just hope that the pricing 
will be low enough. But at the point shooting this video, I just simply don't know. That's unfortunate. Okay, so that's it for today's video. Tomorrow we will have another video. Tomorrow it's again RTX 409010. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.